Physics students, good afternoon. Mr. Feud here. Uh, in this video, we're going to be looking at another application of circular motion, something we've been covering for the last couple of weeks. Uh, here, we're going to be looking at something we've talked about, the washing machine ride, uh, where you are uh, kind of back against the wall, spinning in a circle, and kind of examining some of the forces on your body as you're moving along that type of ride. Uh, this does show up in your homework. Uh, as a reminder, it is an extra credit problem, so it's not going to count against you if you're not able to get there. Uh, but we're going to talk through kind of how to set the problem up, how to approach it using what we know about circular motion. So I'll read the problem for us. It goes like this. An amusement park ride consists of a large vertical cylinder that spins about its axis fast enough that a person inside is stuck to the wall and does not slide down when the floor drops away. It's an important piece of information. We're not going to slide at all. The acceleration of gravity we'll use is 9.8 meters per second squared. Given g is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared, the coefficient u, uh, mu, excuse me, is 0 0.28 uh, of static friction between a person and the wall, and the radius of the cylinder equal to 7 meters. And again, your numbers are probably going to differ just a little bit, but the way we approach the problem will look similar. For simplicity, neglect the person's depth, personal depth, and assume he or she is just a physical point on the wall. So we'll treat us our person is just a point when we're dealing with the free body diagram. The person's speed, which we've talked about this, yeah. when we're dealing with objects moving in a circle, problem number seven, we're told that a person's speed is 2 pi r over t, what we call the circumference over the period, right? Velocity is the amount of space we travel, the distance, which since we're going in a circle, that's the circumference, divided by the time it takes us to make that revolution, the period, if you will, where t is the rotation period of the cylinder. Find the maximum rotation period, T, of the cylinder, which would prevent a 70 kilogram person from falling down. So in order for us to solve for T, we're going to need a couple of things. Okay? Well, we actually are given in our problem statement the radius of our circle. I'll write that over here so that we have it. It is 7 meters. Okay? So it looks like if we're going to use this equation, this approach, we need to solve for our velocity. Okay? And there's a way that we're going to go about doing that uh, that we'll talk through. Okay, also, just kind of take into account the information we're given. Uh, our mass will treat as 70 kilograms. Uh, we're told that the coefficient of static friction, because we are not sliding, between ourself and the wall is 0 0.28. And that acceleration due to gravity will treat as 9.8 meters per second squared. We have a lot of information here, and we have to figure out how we're going to go about using it. So the, the thing that we need, according to this approach, is the velocity. Okay? So there has to be some other way for us to approach this problem to solve for velocity. And to do that, we need to look at the forces that are involved as we're spinning in this circle. Okay? We're moving horizontally okay, around that center axis. Okay? So if we take a side view and put together a free body diagram, I think this is going to be helpful for us. Okay? So if we're looking at us from the side, imagine we're pinned up against the wall, floor drops out, we're not moving. Hey, we need to take into account the forces acting on us. So since we're near the surface of the Earth, gravity is going to be acting down. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, in order to prevent us from sliding, that wall has some uh, roughness on it, uh, friction that's going to prevent us from sliding down. And since it's going to prevent us from sliding, we're going to call that a force of static friction. So this is our side view. Now, the center of our circle, we'll say, is over here. We're rotating around that center point. And that should trigger in your mind, since we're moving in a circle, there has to be a centripetal force, something causing us to do that. Now, I've got to think what that might be. Now, there are a lot of things we can eliminate. We know it's not gravity, because that's not pointed in the right direction. It's not static friction, not pointed in the right direction. We're not told anything about uh, something a string that we're holding on to that's attaching us to the wall. Uh, it's probably not mm, universal gravitation. That's, you know, we're not dealing with something in orbit here. Here's what we have to think about. Okay? Remember, we're in contact with the wall. So as I'm pushing back on the wall with my body, the wall is pushing on us. It's a contact force, what we call a normal force. And in this scenario, we're going to say that our normal force is our centripetal force. Kind of a new way of approaching this problem. So the connecting point we need to make here is that our normal force is equal to our centripetal force. So what we can do is we can say that our normal force, Fn, is equal to N 
d squared over r. And this is the way that we're going to go about finding that velocity, right? We know our mass, we know our radius. Now we just need to set up a way to find the normal force. That will give us velocity, and we can use that to find our period. So let's do some work and maybe try to find our normal force. So let's kind of take into account what we know. I'm going to come to a new page. So our normal force, there's an equation that it shows up in. And kind of we're going to dig back to our past a little bit, what we've done previously. Okay, our force of static friction is equal to our coefficient of friction times the normal force. Okay? Now, we know our coefficient of friction, so if we do some work to maybe find our force of static friction, that's going to help us find our normal force. Okay? So let's look back at our free body diagram. Oops, other way. Now, our force of static friction is in the y direction, and so is our force of gravity. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to sum up my forces in the y direction. Newton's second law, set that equal to mass times acceleration in the y direction. So in the y, we have static friction kind of holding us up, and gravity pulling us down. So Fs minus Fg. Now the problem tells us that we're stuck on the wall. We're not moving, which means our acceleration will be zero. So Fs minus Fg will be equal to zero. So if I want to get Fs, our force of static friction, I'm just going to add our force of gravity to the other side of our equation. And what that will give us is a relationship, a way to find our force of static friction, F sub s. Fs is equal to Fg. Now we know our force of gravity is just the mass of our object times acceleration due to gravity, which we know our mass, and we're given acceleration due to gravity for the Earth. So Fs is equal to our mass, which I believe was 70 kilograms, times the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. So let's take a moment, we'll plug that in. 70 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. That's going to give us a value for our force of static friction, 668 newtons. So this is our starting point. You're gonna realize there are a lot of steps we have to go through to get there, but we're gonna use a lot of the things that we've covered over the last couple of months. So now that we have our force of static friction, I'm going to plug that in up here to solve for our normal force. Okay. So I'll plug some values in. Force of static friction, 686 newtons, is equal to our coefficient, which we're told was 0 0.28 times the normal force. So to get normal force by itself, we need to divide by our coefficient, the 0 0.28, on either side of our equation. That 0 0.28 will cancel out on the right-hand side, and so we'll take our 686 and divide by our coefficient to find the normal force. That will leave us with our normal force, Fn, 2,450 newtons. So, kind of had to use some previous knowledge to get there, uh, but we can use what we know about uh, the relationship between those forces to find our normal force. And so hopefully this will help us get started solving this problem. Okay, once we find that normal force, we're going to come back to where we started, right? We know that our normal force is our centripetal force. It's the force directed toward the center. So all we're going to do now is we're going to set up this equation and use it to solve for our velocity. Okay? So Fn is equal to mv squared over r. Now if I want to get velocity by itself, I need to kind of rearrange our equation just a little bit. We multiply by our radius on both sides, and that will cancel this term out on the right, our r. And then I can divide by the mass. So we'll divide by the mass on both sides as well. So we have an equation for velocity, but we have to be careful. We do need to eventually take a square root. So our velocity is actually going to be the square root of this portion on the right. We have the square root of our radius, times the normal force, divided by the mass. So we'll plug in the values that we now know, see if we can get our velocity. Let's do that together. Velocity is equal to the square root of the radius, which was seven meters, times the normal force, 2,450 newtons, I believe, let me double check, yes, divided by our mass, which was 70 kilograms. So we'll take a moment and plug this in. 7 times 2,450 
divided by our mass of 70. That's going to leave us with a velocity, okay? So our velocity here, I will get about 15.65. As long as we are in SI units to start, we'll be in SI units to end. 15.65 meters per second. And so we're going to use this and take it all the way back to our beginning relationship. Velocity is our circumference over the period, 2 pi r divided by t. So we're going to use that now to finish out our problem. And we have our velocity, we know our radius, so velocity is 2 pi r divided by t. So if we want to get t by itself, we can multiply by t on both sides, and then divide by velocity. We've kind of talked about that in class. And so we can rearrange our equation mathematically to look like this. Period is 2 pi times the radius divided by our velocity. So let's take a moment and plug in what we now know. 2 pi times our radius, which was 7 meters, divided by the velocity that we found, 15.65 meters per second. So we'll plug in what we know, 2 pi times the radius. And we divide by our velocity, 15.65 meters, and we should get a period <laughs> of about 2.81 seconds. That's what we got in our calculator. Let's double check and see. 2.81 seconds, we're right on track. So to get here in this problem, the setup is a little bit different than what we've talked about in class specifically. But the same principles are still true. Right? We're still dealing with some force directed toward the center, and we know how to find that normal force because of its relationship to the uh, force of static friction. We did a little bit of work with Newton's second law, pulling in some information from the past, and then we utilized that uh, to kind of help better approach this problem uh, for what we know now about uh, centripetal force and objects moving in a circle. Now again, this is a pretty small time value, but remember, we're dealing with a, a small circle, and we're dealing with something that's moving about you know, 30, 35 miles an hour. So it shouldn't take it very long uh, to be able to move in one full rotation around that axis. So hopefully this will get us started on problem number six. Remember, this is a problem that is extra credit on your homework. Okay? Best of luck and let me know if you have any questions.